Hi. Welcome to another movie plot. Spoilers ahead. Future can our children look forward to? In the year 2058 humanity builds a hypergate in orbit over Earth, which will eventually be used to evacuate the citizens to the only other habitable planet we know of, Alpha Prime. Professor John Robinson plans to lead the Jupiter mission to the planet, and prepare it for colonization by building another hypergate above it, allowing humans to travel instantly between the two. Global sedition forces constantly send fighters to attack the project, so the United Global Space Force sends their own fighters to intercept, piloted by Major Don West and Jeb Walker. They intervene and after a quick space battle West defeats the first. But Jeb isn't able to shake the second insurgent and gets struck, so he detaches his rear end to collide with it. He almost drifts into the side of the hypergate, but West puts his own life on the line and bumps him to safety, getting himself in trouble with his superiors. John's family are also his team, his son Will, who is in charge of robotics, his wife Maureen's in charge of life sciences, and his mechanic daughter Penny, who has 10 years worth of savings going to waste. John has been given a last-minute replacement pilot for the mission, Major West, as the previous one was murdered in his apartment last night. West is told that Earth only has two decades worth of resources to survive on, and although John doesn't like West's shoot-first attitude, he decides he's the right man for the job after hearing what he did for Jeb. Being a fighter pilot, West has never flown anything like the Jupiter 2 before, and meets John's final child and crew member Dr. Judy, who thinks little of West while he thinks the world of the doctor. Back at home John sees that Will is attempting to build a time machine, having won a school project with the prototype. Medical expert Dr. Zachary Smith was bribed by the global sedition to assist in the late pilot's murder, and is given the task of sabotaging the Jupiter mission once again. He sneaks aboard the Jupiter in cargo, and reprograms the ship's robot to wake up 16 hours into the flight and kill the Robinsons. Before he can sneak back off though the leader of the sedition calls, thanks him for his assistance, and electrocutes him, leaving him unconscious aboard the departing vessel. The trip will take 10 years so they go into cryosleep to make the journey instant, expecting the hypergate above Earth to be completed when they arrive at Alpha. Major West takes off using Jupiter-1 to breach Earth's atmosphere, then breaking out into Jupiter-2 for the rest of the journey. He joins them in sleep having wasted 8 years of training and over 50 combat missions just to take a family on an interstellar picnic. Smith wakes to find that Jupiter-2 has already departed Earth, and did so 16 hours ago. The two-ton robot awakes to his primary directive, but being that Smith is still on board he begins trying to shut it down. Reaching the command deck it starts ripping the ship apart. Unable to stop it Smith wakes the Robinsons and runs off to hide. The robot then chooses its second directory to kill the Robinsons, and nearly kills John and Will but they are saved by Major West. He is electrocuted by its defenses and it continues after the family, oh no, look away, baby. but suddenly stops. Having been reprogrammed remotely by the nine-year-old Will, it is now under his control. Smith tries to appear like he was set up, but West recognizes the sedition logo burned into his hand and tries to space it, but lets him live when Judy gets stuck in the cryopod and he is the only one who can open it. The sabotage has left Jupiter 2 drifting off course, heading for the sun with four minutes until the hull melts. Smith tries to revive Judy but the ship needs all power diverted to the thrusters to escape the sun's gravity, so the doctor must manually resuscitate. When that's still not enough power to break free from the sun's pull, West suggests they use the hyperdrive, not knowing where it will take them but wherever it is being better than here. They activate the drive going straight through the sun, popping out in the middle of nowhere. Judy survives thanks to Smith, and the ship's computer informs them that they are in an uncharted sector of the galaxy, and are for lack of a better word, lost. lost. Suddenly a rift opens up in front of them revealing a drifting ship in the middle of space. They approach to find it's a UGSF ship called the Proteus and decide to go aboard to look for any signs of life. Having hacked its CPU and changed its subroutines, Will has turned the security robot into a remote control death machine. Bringing Smith to keep an eye on him the crew dock the ship and send the robot in first, finding that the Proteus's computers respond quicker than anything they've ever used. Biological matter blocks holes throughout the ship, and non-operational robots many more years advanced than Will's lie inactive. Come on, Dr. Smith. At the command deck they find signs of a firefight, and a recording of an older looking Jeb in distress. Having been promoted to Major he documents that they were on a mission to find West, as his friend would do the same for him. They learn that an alien ship had attached to the Proteus carrying unknown eggs, and Smith sneaks a command module from a robot into his pocket. Reaching a hydroponic room grown out of control for decades, they find an alien stowaway that acts like a monkey and takes a liking to West. Another computer shows them star constellations that no human has seen before, and a route straight to Alpha Prime. 
waking on the outside of the ship and making their way through the organic matter sealing the Proteus. Carnivorous silicon-based spiders begin to swarm the crew. As they flee back to Jupiter 2, Will takes up holographic controls to make things easier, and holds back the creatures until they reach the doors. Major West takes over holding the spiders back with a million bucks worth of weaponry, wishing he could trade it all in for a can of bug spray. While Will, uses the robot as a battering ram to get onto their ship. West sprints back and jumps on board with the robot being used to plug the hole. Keeping the spiders back until they can get the doors closed, Smith gets scratched by one of the little buggers, and the robot is destroyed by the spiders. The relentless arachnids continue to pursue them into space. So West overloads the Proteus's engines, and despite John's objections he destroys the ship and annihilates the spiders. The shock wave from the explosion damages the Jupiter too, sending them hurling down to a nearby planet where they crash land into the surface. Twice. Smith works on the control module as the spider scratch begins to spread, while Penny names the alien monkey Blarp since that's all it ever says, Blarp. though it eventually learns more English. <laughs> on the mysterious planet they locate a radioactive material with which to refuel the Jupiter 2. However it lies in the center of another strange warp zone just like the one they pass through in space. The wormholes are sending the crew through time, time already being in the future they worry that the one surrounding the fuel source could push them even further. Will suggest that maybe they aren't natural, since his time machine would have the same side effects if ever he gets it working. So Major West and Professor Robinson venture into the unknown in search of fuel, while the ladies stay back to repair the ship and Will, works on repairing the robot. Not long into the journey West finds the remains of a rusted Jupiter II, before being shot in the back by an unseen assailant. When John gets struck and knocked out as well, the shooter reveals itself to be Will's robot, having long since been repaired and improved. As smart as Will is, Smith fought in the Millennial Wars and uses his wits to convince the child that his father could be hurt, so the two go together into the bubble in search of him. While in there Smith comes across the graves of Will's entire family, having been dead for many years. They reach the center of the distortion and find another version of the Jupiter II laying in ruin, so Will relinquishes control of his pistol to Smith who immediately turns on the trusting child. Never trust anyone. John wakes to find himself aboard the ship, hearing from an alternate future version of his son that his father left and never returned to him and that the family stood no chance without him as Proteus spiders descended from space and killed the women. Future Will has constructed a full-fledged version of his time machine with the Jupiter II's power core, wanting to use it to go back to the day they left Earth and stop the launch. His father argues against it worrying that the distortion could be brought back to Earth if he does, but Will doesn't care as he just wants to see his family again. Never fear. Smith suddenly walks in with young Will, at gunpoint, using his stolen module to take control of the robots, and demanding to use the machine himself to go home. Future Will, gets to remember how innocent he was as a child, and laughs at Smith's pathetic mutiny attempt, saying that a boy oh, couldn't survive, survive on this hostile planet all alone. The alternate Smith. version of Dr. Easy. Smith arrives, disarming his younger self having become a father figure to Will. The spider scratch had side effects that mutated Smith, but also made him better fit to survive the planet's harsh conditions, and he is filled with self-loathing for his younger self as his ambition is what caused all this. He throws himself off a ledge and tells the robot to take the Robinson family away, while he and Future will begin preparations for their return to Earth. Young Will speaks to the robot's emotional AI, having been something that he implemented into it when repairs were made. He convinces it that they are still friends, and it rips the hijack module off. Major West takes Will and the robot back to their ship, while finding a still-breathing Smith on the way and being a good Samaritan. Now that the machine is finished, Spider Smith reveals that he was the one who killed the Robinsons, keeping Will alive just long enough to finish the device. He exposes himself having transformed into a giant spider-human hybrid, seeing himself now as a god and planning on spreading his spider babies across the earth, throwing Will into the portal. John shows up with a dagger his son had hidden in the robot and begins to battle Spider Smith, cutting open his egg sac. Since they witness them eat their wounded on the Proteus, the babies spill out and consume Spider Smith allowing John the chance to shove the monster into the unstable edge of the portal and incinerate him. He sees his future son still alive, and instead of returning to his family he saves his life. The time bubble has made the planet unstable and it is violently breaking apart. West arrives back and tries to escape with what fuel they have, but without enough power to reach escape velocity. The stranded John Robinson watches on as the Jupiter 2 is hit by debris, and his family explode in front of him. All future Will has ever thought about is making it back to Earth, but seeing how much his dad cares about his family he reprograms the time machine, pushing John through it to the Jupiter just before it took off. Only having enough power for one person, future Will is left on the doomed planet asking them to remember it. 
Rather than attempting to escape into the atmosphere, John commands West to pilot the ship through the planet's core, enabling them to use the planet's gravity to propel the ship out the other side. Robinson's plan works perfectly and they all survive. But the collapsed planet forms a black hole that begins to suck the Jupiter 2 in. Having downloaded the advanced star charts from the Proteus and with no other option, the Robinsons must once again activate the ship's hyperdrive to escape, entering the coordinates of Alpha Prime and launching themselves into hyperspace. Cool. And the movie ends. Lost in Space is a 1998 science fiction adventure film directed by Stephen Hopkins. Do they have a name for what's wrong with you? Starring William Hurt, Matt LeBlanc, Gary Oldman, Jared Harris, Lacey Chabert, Mimi Rogers, Jack Johnson, and Heather Graham. The plot is adapted from the 1965 television series of the same name, and itself is inspired by the 1812 novel The Swiss Family Robinson by Johann David Wyss. Sorry. Over 3,500 names are listed in the end credits, including Gary Oldman twice. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more.